what's up guys and welcome back to my channel as you can see from the new background we have moved to a new house it has been a month now and i love it here guys i feel absolutely blessed this is our dream house it's like i have a view outside guys so jay i'm looking out the window i'm using natural light can you see i have my own studio for doing my videos <laughs> Anyway, guys, let me not get distracted. I will do a separate home tour video if you guys want to see that. Let me know in the comments. So in today's video, guys, I'm going to be sharing what to consider or basically things to look out for when you are purchasing a house, whether it's your first house or your second house or your whatever many house. <laughs> So the first thing guys is your affordability look at your budget and see how much can you afford do you have capacity to be paying for the bond first of all and how much capacity do you have because you don't want to be stretching yourself too thin if you already maybe are paying rent at least that can be a first indication of okay maybe that much you can afford but really look into it because there's also additional costs that come with home ownership which i'll also mention in this video but really think about how much you can afford and then when you know how much you can afford then you can also go to a bank and also see how much capacity they will give you because if you go to a bank and you ask for a loan they will most likely give you something that might be a bit bigger than what you can really afford because sometimes we don't pin down all our expenses when they ask us to do a draft budget or they just think okay because you're earning this much you probably have capacity to pay let's say maybe 30 percent or 35 percent of your income and you might find that no based on how your expenses are you can only afford to pay 25 percent so like i always say don't be sold to so don't be sold would say i take a house of two million no be i'm prepared to or i'm looking for an amount of this much a good indicator to find out how much a bank is willing to fund you but at the end of the day you need to look at how much you're going to be paying every month and whether or not you will afford that for your bond still on affordability what people usually recommend is that your bond amount should not be more than 30 percent of your take-home pay but i know like dave ramsey um who's quite conservative when it comes to debt he said it shouldn't be more than 25 percent and i err on the side of dave ramsey because i know there's additional costs that come with home ownership if you're buying in a complex there might be levies but that's going to be in point number two so a quarter to a third of your take-home pay more or less those are the two kind of recommended maximums of how much your bond should be your bond repayment so the second thing to consider is whether you're buying a standalone home or you are buying in a complex a house will have rates and taxes that you need to pay but now if you live in a complex or a combined living area whether it's a complex or estate whatever you might find that there are levies as well that you'll need to pay so and those levies can be quite a lot because maybe you're paying for security you're paying for like the gardening services it just becomes a bit much so you need to factor that into whether it's 25 percent or 30 percent into basically calculating your affordability so don't forget those costs because they do mount up so just make sure that you factor in what kind of home you're buying another thing to consider is when you go to your bank whether you're getting a fixed rate or a floating rate or a variable rate so when it comes to the interest rates, it's best to get a variable rate for a home because it's a very long term um, kind of asset or that you get it that you are buying. So the interest rates will fluctuate over time. It's usually around 20 years here in SA. That's how much banks will give you. If it's floating interest rates, you get the benefit of paying less whenever the prime rate decreases. And then obviously it means you pay more though if the prime rate increases because it will always be the prime rate plus whatever the bank says you must pay or minus gave okay, you've got like that great credit score and really shop around so that's going to be my next point 
shop around for the lowest interest rate that you can get like don't just ask your bank because you bank with them and leave it there get multiple quotes so that you have multiple choices to choose from because you don't want to go to another um, finance yeah, or bank and find that you could have gotten a rate that was cheaper elsewhere so find at least three quotes and then just take the best one and sometimes you can even say this is what i got from so and so can you give me the same rate or a bit lower sometimes you can even say that if you have a preferred bank that you really want to negotiate with but basically negotiate your interest rate and put your best foot forward when they are assessing you and try to get a low interest rate because literally every single basis point counts so how do you really really know if you can afford a house or if you are ready for the house i would say you need to look at do you have an emergency fund which is basically about three to six months of your savings of your monthly expenses in savings and also if you've got significantly reduced debt or not that much debt because you don't want to be adding a bond payment on top on top of other debt that you might have another thing to really be aware of when you are purchasing a home is that there's something called transfer duties which is basically the tax that you pay when you purchase a house and there's a different percentage that you pay based on the value of your home but there's a benefit if your home costs less than 1 million rands then you don't have to pay transfer duties you buy your home as is and you are sorted but if you do, if you're buying a home that's above 1 million rands then you start paying tax and the tax increases as a percentage of the value of your home it will increase so you don't want to find yourself paying too much in transfer duties or rather if you know that you are buying a house that's going to need you to pay transfer duties because it is above a million rands then you need to at least um save up the money <laughs> so that's the other thing really save up for transfer duty so once you know how much you're looking for look at the transfer duties tables are very, very available on the SARS website look there and see how much your transfer duties will probably be based on the value that you're working with and then save up that much as the minimum because you will need to pay it out other important thing when it comes to transfer duties is that you actually don't pay transfer duties if you buy a new development so you pay transfer duties if you're buying a house that's above a million rand but if it's a new development even if it's above a million rands you still won't pay transfer duties because you're buying straight from the developer you're not buying from another seller who previously owned the house so that's really another benefit if you want to buy something new and unused it really will see your benefit another thing to really consider when buying a house is that whatever the house is advertised for you don't necessarily have to put that amount in an offer you can offer the exact amount you can offer a slightly lower amount so don't be discouraged because you're seeing this 10 million rand house and you only have 9 million rand <laughs> playing with big numbers here just you know for fun guys we are let's stream go put your offer of nine million and let's see you never know god works in mysterious ways so people do usually have a cushion it won't obviously be a full million that they can go forgo but sometimes they can forgo a few thousands so just go with a fair offer obviously you don't want to be ripping people off because obviously the seller also wants to um, make a gain because probably they also purchased the house and you know how it is so you don't want to rob people and basically lowball people but just put your best foot forward and don't limit yourself just because you think um the, the amount is too high try and offer what you have and maybe they'll take it don't obviously lowball people just for the sake of lowballing people you know yeah but you definitely don't have to pay the amount that is advertised on the advert you can negotiate another thing to consider when you're buying a house is that there will be lawyers fees it would be nice if buying a house is like going down to the nearest tuck shop and getting a loaf of bread and going back home but it's, it's got legal implications so there's bond attorneys 
there's um, conveyancing attorneys, there's lots of attorneys that get involved. So you really want to make sure that you've built up your cash reserves because those lawyers don't come very cheap. You might find yourself having to pay like 40000 uh, to get your property registered and all of that with the deed office and you also still need to pay your bond attorneys as well so there's quite a lot that you need to pay i remember on my earlier videos we had share about saving 10 20 percent of your income and people would be like yo but it's because we're working towards this point and also for me there's this verse where um or the story in the bible about the 10 versions where 10 of them were ready and they had their oil even though the husband had not arrived so you need to always be ready and then the others they used up their oil and then when the husband arrived they had nothing so for me i just always think of those 10 virgins i always want to be ready that's why i've always been like okay let me exercise my saving muscle so that i'm ready and at the same time you never know when an opportunity will come you might find that you're not really house hunting but when it comes you just know that it is and you want to be in a place where you can do that so that when op opportunities come you are ready because like oprah says luck happens when opportunity meets preparation so you always need to be prepared so that's just one of my mottos or one of the things that i like to live by always be prepared don't run out of oil that's why i always just try to encourage a savings culture because it helps another thing that's really important is how long will you be staying because you don't want to just buy a place for the sake of buying a place if you know that maybe in a year or two's time you want to move cities or you want to change and go elsewhere because you find that you might not have accumulated enough um, appreciation and value for you to sell that house in a profitable amount if it's not going to be a long-term um, investment for you so you really need to you can't just buy, be buying a house and selling buying and selling and it's obviously like you're in that business and you're renovating and you really make like upgrading the house but as a basic person who's just buying a home it's a commitment a 20 year long one like obviously it doesn't have to be that long but you really need to think long term think of how long you're going to stay don't just say oh i just found a job here let me buy maybe you can wait for a few months and then buy when you really know that you've settled at a specific place and you're happy there for good for obviously not for good but for good for the foreseeable future so it's really a big step because it's like it's your permanent dwelling so it's yeah it's a very big step so consider if you really want to because renting really is an option a lot of people look down on it but it can help you in the long term because i've mentioned that these capital costs like lawyers transfer duties you don't want to be incurring those and then find that you still um are gonna sell in a in two years time or less than five years time and then now you have to um start again getting reserves to pay off lawyers and start the process again for a new property so just really consider the long term how long will you be staying then you'll know if you're ready for that house. another thing to really consider is what are you prioritizing are you prioritizing the location or are you prioritizing the property or the house and structure itself sometimes obviously you can get the benefit of both being great but like really it's so important to know that the location can really determine the value of your house going forward because you could find this stunning house but if it's in a horrible location then it's going to be horrible it's going to be difficult for you to build value over time and it's going to be difficult for you to sell off that house so really consider location above the structure of the house because you can always demolish whatever beaten down house you find in a good location but if you have a perfect house in a horrible location you can't exactly um i don't know fix the location if i can put it that way because obviously that's external forces so i would say really consider the location let me just make an example we've been looking for a home for a very long time with a specific budget amount and we just did not want to budge but we were not finding nice houses in the locations that we wanted because our budget was just too low and whenever we did um find really nice houses we still just couldn't bypass the fact that 
the location wasn't great so and obviously it's gonna be difficult for the value of our house to increase we also consider the quality of life that we want to live we've got children that we're raising we like going out for jobs my husband is a marathoner so you really want to consider safety and all of that wherever it is that you're purchasing a home another thing to really be careful about guys is cash handling or the transferring of funds there's a lot of fraud that goes on where um, somehow they'll intercept your emails and now you are in a place where you're paying a fraudster all that money that you were transferring like it could be let's say like 40,000 or 100,000 if it includes um, your transfer duties it could be a huge chunk of money that you are transferring or paying out and you don't want to be caught out paying it to the wrong bank account so just make sure that you verify all bank accounts that you will be paying into because it is large amounts of money that you're working with when you're purchasing a home another thing to look out for when you are buying a house is that you'll find that um some estate agents don't have a sole mandate so that means that the seller has given multiple estate agents um the right to advertise and try sell the house so when you when you find such a house look around so online you might find the very same house listed at a lower rate or a lower amount by another estate agent so when you do find a house that you like look in other sites and look for other agents in case another agent is selling the very same house for a lower amount then you can see that okay this is how much that they are playing around at so obviously it's not nice if someone is advertised and then you are now buying from someone else but just it is what it is it can help you to um, get the house at a more reasonable amount because sometimes that difference is just that the other estate agent maybe is charging a higher commission and the other one might be like okay they'll take a smaller commission as long as they make the sale so there's multiple differences or reasons why the prices could be different so you buy the house so just focus on getting the house at the most competitive rate which is obviously the lower rate for you or the lowest price in your case and this final point now that I'm going to be sharing is not from a financial perspective but it's really from a wellness perspective if you get it it's um, make sure that when you are house hunting that you write everything down that you are looking for there are beautiful houses out there and they can easily distract you and then you putting up an offer because you think it's what you want and then when you go back to the basics you find that no it doesn't meet this criteria it doesn't meet that criteria so you just always need to know exactly what it is that you want what you will compromise on and what you won't compromise on and when you get home after viewing then you see if the property that you viewed ticks all the boxes or it doesn't take all of them and the ones that it doesn't take are you comfortable with compromising because it's a very long term as i've said 20 years or however long that you plan to live with that property so it's so important that you like really look at um praying about it or writing it down and really going for what you want and what you can afford and not just taking the first thing that comes just because it's being sold to you. Estate agents, guys, yo, I remember when we were looking for the previous home now, the one that um, we just moved out of. Like this lady, we said we wanted a three bedroom home. This lady was like, there's a possible third bedroom, but it's a two bedroom. Let me show it to you guys. They, he, she shows it to us and it's literally like a passageway and she's like you can close that up with bricks and add a door and it will be a fourth a third bedroom we're like what <laughs> no it's not so they'll literally put a bow on anything and sell it to you so you really need to know what it is that you are looking for and when it speaks to your heart and your soul and you know it then go for it and i wish you all the best that is it from me guys i hope this video will help you if you are buying a home or considering getting one or will be getting one in future and if you are not subscribed please make sure that you do cheers <laughs>